Welcome to the HHC Sports Weekly. I'm Justin Soakland, and we are going to look at week three of the Hoosier Hills Conference football competition. The eight teams in the conference dove into league play this week. We had one incredible game, one incredible individual performance that we'll take a look at. So we want to talk about that, and we also want to talk about the girls golf HAC tournament that's coming up this weekend, and a coach in the conference that's about to set a state record. So we will sit, discuss all those things this week. The best game of week one was Madison against Floyd Central as the Cubs prevailed 28 to 21. It produced the first upset. The Madison rallied in the second half to stun Floyd Central. The Cubs trailed 14 to nothing early and 21 to eight at halftime. But after coach Patrick Morrison challenged his team at the half, the Cubs responded with a great effort in the second half. Kyle Tucker was the Madison hero as he ran for 280 yards and two touchdowns. Gage Klingsmith ran for 156 yards and two touchdowns for the Highlanders. But he also had a key fumble after catching a pass in the second half, and that helped turn the momentum to the Cubs, who beat Floyd for the first time since 2006. Tucker scored twice during the comeback and was a workhorse with 37 carries. Madison improved to 2-1 overall with its first conference win. Colton Kim threw for 162 yards for Floyd Central, which slipped a 1-2 overall and 0-1 in the league. Morrison had plenty of reasons to be pleased with his Cubs. Good game last night. Uh, obviously, we started out slow. Uh, we're a little bit sloppy in the first half. Uh, we're making some missed tackles and putting some thin guys on offense. Uh, I really challenged the guys in the halftime, and they came out and they responded. Uh, we just took control of the ball game in the second half. Who were the key players for you in the second half that, that came through for you? Uh, Kyle Tucker, uh, he had over 270 yards rushing. He uh, really did a great job. He the ball, he made six kind of in the first half, and then uh, kind of stuck it up, came out and played hard for us in the second half. And then the, uh, you know, our defense kind of stepped up. You know, Boyd didn't, wasn't able to score any points in the second half. Uh, stepped up, played a really good ball game. We were playing on their side of the line of scrimmage, uh, making some key plays on defense. At Jeffersonville, the Red Devils exploded for 26 points in the second quarter and roared past BNL 46 to 28 in Blair Field. After BNL built a 13 to nothing lead, the Devils erupted as Isaiah Mack broke a 50-yard touchdown run, Michael Lively returned an interception for a touchdown, and Jamal Britt threw two touchdown passes, including one on the final play of the first half to set the tone for the second half. BNL was guilty of seven deadly sins, turnovers. The Stars had four fumbles and three interceptions that erased most of their good work. Matt Scheffler had seven yards rushing and scored twice, and Braden Tidd threw two touchdown passes and ran for another. But the mistakes were costly as BNL slumped 0-3. Mack ran for 114 yards, and Britt was 13 of 16 passing for 249 yards and three touchdowns. Jeffersonville went to 3-0 overall and 2-0 in the conference. Yeah. Jeffersonville coach Lonnie Oldham has an explosive team while BNL coach Steve Weber knew the turnovers were fatal for his struggling squad. I'll start with the bat. You guys didn't exactly set the world on fire there in the first quarter. But no, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's an anomaly. I don't know why they weren't ready to play. We weren't mentally ready to play. We had way too many mistakes early. Threw two picks in the first four drives. Can't do that against good teams. They had a couple of chances to really do some things. They dropped some balls. So they, they really should have more points than they got. But um, once we got going, I mean, you can see the explosiveness that we have in our yeah. team, and uh, it's just it's just the old grind, you know. You just got to try to get them ready, and then when it's time to play, they got to be ready. And they weren't really, we weren't really ready to play tonight. Three scores in 43 seconds, so you know that takes care of a lot of problems. One on defense, two on offense. Uh, you struck pretty quick. Right, right. I mean, we we have a quick strike offense. So uh, what I was most pleased about was 29 seconds and a half, and we got the ball on the 25-yard yeah, line yep. to score. So I mean, we practice that every day in practice at two minute all. So if we got time on the clock with timeouts, we think we can score at any time. So I was real pleased with that. And then the second half on defense early, we were good. That's right. We were real good coming out of the locker room on defense. Late, it just kind of, you know, they just they knew we was gonna win late, but. Early second half, we were yeah, good. You learned to realize that. I mean, there were just so many silly, I guess, mistakes. Too many mistakes. Um, again, the drop passes, um, the fumbles. fumbles. Yeah. yeah. And again, you're not going to beat a good team. You're not going to do it with those mistakes. Um, we're good enough to play. We're good enough to be in games. We got to clean a lot of things up. And stop playing just to be close. Yeah. Start playing to win instead. And I kind of, I was a little disappointed coming out the half. 
you know, I feel like that attitude was there. You know, we, we're close and stay close. And, right. You know, no more moral victories. You know, we got to start winning right. some games. New Albany rebounded with a 44 to 19 victory over Jennings County, and Zach Donan had his second straight big game for the Bulldogs. He ran for three touchdowns and passed for two more. New Albany's Julian Johns also had a great night with three touchdowns, including an 84-yard kickoff return. Donan was 11 of 15 passing for 153 yards, while Jones, Johns caught four passes for 70 yards. Connor Byram scored the two touchdowns for the Panthers, who fell to 1-2 overall and 0-1 in the league. New Albany is now 1-2 overall and 1-0 with his first win in the conference, and it was an important one for New Albany coach Charlie Fields. I'm a lot of diversity, and we think that this, what I like is the kids' response to it. Never once did they question what they were doing. Never once did they question their team. They just came back every day and went back to work. And, uh, you know, that attitude, that mindset, it gets win for you, and it was very much needed. And we thought it would come. It was just a matter of time. Columbus East ran over Seymour 61-6, and this figured to be a mismatch with East ranked number one in Class 4A. And it was. Markel Jones, who is now in the mix as a Mr. Football candidate, ran for 237 yards on only 11 carries and four touchdowns. He broke a 71-yard score on the second play of the game, and East never looked back while rolling to a 54-0 lead at halftime. Jones, a Purdue recruit, had all of his touchdowns in the first quarter. East has only had, also had two defensive touchdowns. How good is Jones? He already has 833 yards and 10 touchdowns this season, and he's averaging 11.0 yards per carry. That's impressive. East is now 3-0, 1-0 in the league, and has now won 50 straight games against the HAC competition. The Olympians are the 10-time defending HAC champs. Next week's games in the Hoosier Hills Conference in football, one of the intriguing ones is Madison at Jeffersonville. The Cubs are now 2-1 while Jeffersonville is 3-0, and the Cubs have never beaten the Red Devils on the field in 40 meetings. Only two wins that have been registered to Madison have been forfeit wins. So could that streak end? We will see, because it figures to be a good matchup. Real quick, real quick, what about next week? Madison won tonight, uh, and you guys are on a roll, so it's going to set up a pretty good ball game with Madison. Well, uh, we take it one game at a time. We're hopeful that we'll play better the whole game for 60 minutes, our 48 minutes. If we play better next week, we'll, we'll take care of things because we got a really good team when they stay focused, and it's just keeping them kids focused. But Madison beating Floyd, that's that's a shocker to most people. Um, but I don't know. I haven't seen Madison. I haven't seen Floyd yet. So I'll see them on tape this week, and we'll have a good game plan. Also, Floyd Central 1-2 and two, will look to rebound when it visits Seymour, which is 0-3. Jennings County 1-2. and two will have the unenviable task of traveling to Columbus East, which is 3-0, and BNL 0-3 will seek that elusive first win when it visits New Albany, which is 1-2. In other sports in the conference, the HSC Golf Tournament is set for Saturday at Otis Park in Bedford. The teams to watch will include number 15 Floyd Central and number 18 Madison, and BNL could be dangerous on its home course. Madison is the three-time defending league champion. Players to watch will include Madison's Amanda Detmer, who is destined for Jacksonville University, and BNL's Kennedy Holtzclaw, who will go on to the University of Indianapolis. And finally, in boys tennis, Floyd Central coach Rick Miller is poised to break the state record for career wins in boys and girls tennis combined. Miller has 961 victories in his Hall of Fame career, which is currently tied with Silver Creek's Mike Crabtree for the most combined wins in boys and girls. Miller has 668 wins as the head coach of the Highlanders in boys tennis. That wraps up Week 3 of the Hoosier Hills Conference Sports Weekly. Continue to follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. And if anyone would like to contribute video to this cause, we would gladly accept it. Just send us a message to one of those accounts. Thanks for watching.